Good morning. All right, Jesus, let's pray over the internet now, Lord. We just ask that you just protect this internet, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to cast a broader net with your message, taking it out into the internet. So I thank you, God, that there will be no issues today with my service. Okay, ladies. So here we are. We are on day eight of declaring Psalms 91 over, um, over so many issues right now. We are declaring Psalms 91 over our loved ones. We've been declaring it over the prodigal, over our health. Um, there's so many issues that need the shelter of the Most High, that need the covering of His wings. A picture that the Lord gave me today was the resting under the shadow of Him, under the shadow of His wings, means He's in flight. That we have to, wherever that flying eagle is going, to stay under the flight of the shadow. We've got to move with. We've got to move with the King, and so I'm excited to share revelations that the Lord's been giving me. My mind has been blowing up since 2:30 this morning with downloads from the Holy Ghost that I am struggling with even trying to put it down and not write 50 pages because I still want you guys to love me at the end of all of this. And if I, if I write the way I'm having things being brought to my mind, scriptures, just these bunny trails of scripture that he's taking me down with this explosion of dwelling, what it looks like to dwell. And I asked him yesterday, Father, what do you want to focus on today? Psalms 91, what do you want us to focus on today? And I just heard him say, pray for the persecuted. Pray for the persecuted. Now, I know that there are people in the underground church and we are praying for those who are persecuted. But I also want to talk about those who are going under persecution, being bullied, that, that many times persecution on our side of things doesn't look like, doesn't look like a, a death threat. But it looks like being silenced. It looks like being, feeling anxious, feeling insecure, going to work and feeling persecuted because of your choice, your belief, your the things that you are standing for. Um, I'm going to share a time when I was working and I was actually sharing with a young woman about Jesus. And another person turned me in because she was upset about me sharing my faith. Now, it wasn't your typical persecution of, you know, I was being silenced at a corporate um, building. And I brought up this question. Why must I endure the F-bomb all day long? Why must I have no voice? And I... I wasn't, I guess you could say I was arguing a little bit with management, but I wanted to know why. Why did I have to listen to dirty jokes in the F-bomb all day long, but me talking about the peace of God is offensive? Answer this question for me. I asked her. There was no answer. There was no answer to it. And the thing is, is that she could not keep me from talking about Jesus. It was just that this person didn't want to hear about Jesus and the goodness of God and that that he has a way that he makes a way during our hardships and that what's offensive it's offensive to the runner it's offensive to the one who doesn't want answers it's offensive to the one who's running from answers it's offensive to the one who doesn't want God in their life right now it's convicting remove the conviction and sometimes that looks like persecution so I want to focus on what it looks like to live in times of persecution. When I was younger, I can remember being spit on. Believe it or not, I was spit on. I was praying. I was, I was at a 4-H. I was raising sheep. I was at 4-H and I was praying. I had been bullied and kind of tracked by it was this one guy and two girls. And for some reason, they targeted my 14-year-old self. I did not understand it. I didn't understand why they were harassing me and pestering me in such a way that I was afraid. 
I was I was afraid to go out and get water for my lamb by myself because I was afraid they'd jump me. They had zeroed in on harassing me and they could tell that I was afraid. And I can remember working on my lamb and getting her ready for show and I just started praying. And I was filled with the Holy Ghost at 14, so I was just praying in tongues. Um, privately, not out loud, but I was just kind of mumbling and um, to myself and to Jesus. And they were up above, if you are familiar with an arena and you have down below, up above, they were up above on the uh, platform and the boy hawked a loogie, I mean big old globby one, and he spit it on me while I was praying. And I felt, first of all, if you anybody knows me and, and that kind of situation, I, I dry heave pretty well. And I just remember looking at it. And this moment in time at such a young age, I just took the rag that I had for my lamb and I just wiped it off. And I just looked up at them. And I was just shocked. I, w I didn't feel fear at that moment. I was like, wow. I've been spit on for praying. And I can remember having that thought because when I was younger, I had a huge burden for Russia for the, to go past the Iron Curtain, to take Bibles into the communist country. I had a huge burden for it. It is what I wanted to do. I wanted to get in and I wanted the adventure of taking the gospel to places it was not allowed to be. And so I would read the stories like Brother Andrew taking Bibles and hiding them in his VW bug and putting him in hubcaps and asking God to blind the, the guards when he would go through the checkpoints and and God did God did so let's just focus on what it means to be persecuted or to be harassed or to be bullied at some level in your life be it something that you're standing for be it something that we are living in a time where you just don't get to disagree with somebody without being attacked and if you're an attacker because somebody disagrees with you knock it off I'll tell you right now, that's not how you're going to change their mind. We don't change our mind attacking people. We've got to come together and we have to have a, a level of knowledge in our speech because it's going to be our kindness, not passiveness. You can be kind and authoritative and firm and speak the truth without attacking somebody. We, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and we can't help it when somebody's eyes aren't open. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to give them revelation. But we are going to ask for revelation on this right here. Today, we will focus on the word dwell and what it looks like during times of persecution. And so I'm going to just quote the very first verse right now. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91 1, the 911. You see, the gospel has advanced because of persecution. Promotions come because of betrayals. Purposes are revealed because of pressure. The more the enemy tries to hush the good news, the louder it gets. The more he tries to squeeze and suffocate the breath out of the word of God, it only causes it to propel like a bar of soap being constricted. The the enemy has his hands trying to, trying to silence the, God's people and it just slips out of his hand like a bar of soap. And right now, there is more people aware about the persecuted church in Afghanistan than there's ever been. There's more people if it's coming to light and we are seeing the persecution and what's happening just in another country and this is what's happening. They are dwelling and God is imparting and deploying us to pray for the saints. The press, pressure of persecution can never decrease the kingdom of God. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is where God dwells. No devil, no government or man has that kind of authority to silence, to silence the gospel. They can try, but you know what? You can't harness a shadow. We are under the shadow of the Almighty. So it's like this. P persecution brings increase like the drawback of an arrow or the storm that is spinning the blades of a windmill. 
we are seeing that persecution will propel the gospel. We know, we know the word of God and we have access to the gospel because people have died. They propelled it. Their lives were investments. And I will go into that. And that is actually biblical. I was excited to find that. Again, I've been going down scripture bunny trails. And it keeps bringing me back to these moments. This scripture in, in the 911 anointing time that we are living in. Where the enemy tries to silence God's people. More voices raise up. Praise is a weapon. It comforts. It empowers. And Here's what I love. Praise inhabits. Praise inhabits the presence of God. Psalms 22, 3 says he inhabits the praises of his people. The Hebrew word for inhabit is dwell or to sit, to make oneself at home. Wait, plant yourself and stay put. Okay, so let's go back to Psalms 91. Hang with me, girls. I'm going to wrap this up in a big, beautiful red bow, but hang with me. Praise inhabits the presence of God, the very presence of God. But then it says that he dwells in our praise. And then we go to Psalms 91 that says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. The same Hebrew word used for that God dwells in the praises of his people is the same Hebrew word in Psalms 91.1 telling us whoever dwells, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Now here it is. Here is this big, beautiful, sparkly bow. Dwell is more than living. Here's what it means in the Hebrew. It means to be married to, to be committed, a covenant. You don't ever leave. You don't ever leave. When God dwells, he doesn't ever leave the praises of his people. There's that scripture that tells us his praise will ever be on our lips. Oh, I love that one. His praise will ever be on our lips. It says that he, he how lovely is the dwelling place of the Lord God Almighty. The dwelling place. We're talking about dwelling we're talking about what it looks like to live under the shelter of the Most High and not just live, but and not just hide, not just hide under the shelter, not just run to the refuge, but exist under, exist under at all times existing in his in that covering. And here's what here's the picture. The Most High, the Most High is a mobile home. His dwelling place is a mobile home. Wherever the spirit goes, we go. Ezekiel says it. Wherever the spirit goes, we go. Wherever that shadow is going, we're underneath it. We're not leaving it. We're not, de we're not departing from it. We're not hiding, we're not hiding in it when, when there is times of trouble. We are staying under it in times of trouble. When there's persecution, we've never left the shelter of the Most High. The shelter of the Most High stays over us at all times, even to death, even all the way to death. How lovely is your dwelling place, oh God. How lovely is your dwelling place. Think about this. Think about this. If his he, he inhabits the praise of his people. And then it says that the kingdom of God is where he dwells. And it says that we are the temple. We inhabit the kingdom of God. Wait. How lovely is your dwelling place, oh God. You. How lovely are you. You are his dwelling place, yet... You hide under him and you dwell under him. This, my mind is going in all of this because it reminds me of when the Holy Spirit woke me up when I was being persecuted in a young age at 30 and I was being um, falsely accused, calling a false prophet. Slander was flying. It was flying long, hard, and stinky. I was being annihilated by friends that I thought were in it for the long haul. And when God called me away to the secret place and he gave me the revelation of when we hide within him and he dwells within us and he hides within him and we dwell, 
he, he dwells within us. It creates this momentum, this moving moment where the enemy can't pin you down. He can't stick his ugliness and, and the words can't stick to you. Go back and listen to that one. It's a few days ago. But we are talking about when the kingdom of God dwells in us and we are being persecuted and we're hiding in him. We're hiding in him. We're hiding in him. The enemy cannot come against you in a way that you think. Think about Stephen. Think about Stephen in a moment of his persecution. One, his life was laid down and it propelled the gospel. Now I want to tell you a scripture that, that just another moment where it blew my mind. Another one. It was, let's see if I have it typed up or not. I'm really sorry, girls. I am, I am all over the place with this because I've been up since 2.30 with this scripture that has that the Lord's just been burning on me where it says precious are the death of the saints precious are the death of the saints that the death of the saints are precious to God and that doesn't mean in martyr that doesn't mean in martyr it just means that when somebody goes when somebody goes the word precious not only does it mean jewels not only does it mean um, dear, but the word actually means influential. The Greek word for precious or Hebrew word for precious is influential. Do you hear me? Influential are the death of his saints. The death of those we love that have gone before us are influential. You know what it says? That's what it's saying. Unless a seed dies, unless a seed dies, it cannot, it can't flourish again. Our lives Oh, I hope to God that my life is a seed that's influential. When I die, that the influence that my life has brought, my life has brought an influence of the kingdom. Those who are being persecuted right now, and if they die today, may it be, may it be the way Stephen died, where the heavens opened up and they didn't feel, they, he, they don't feel the pain. They just feel the, the resurrection power of the King of Kings because they lived under the shadow at all times. They were in a covenant. They were in a marriage of dwelling. They did not leave the presence of God. We don't leave the presence of God, come back to it, and leave, and when it gets hard, come back to it. That's not how it works. He who dwells, he who abides, he who lives. John 15 talks about, because you abide in me, I remain in you. We are talking about this explosion of understanding that we have to live in a constant state of existing in his presence at all times because we don't know we don't know our final days we have buried precious beautiful young people in these this last year because we do not know our final days and when that happens i pray to god and and i ask that for whitney to, to be a seed for Vincent to be a seed, for his life to count, for her life to count, to advance the gospel that their lives sowed seeds and brought the kingdom of God even further. We can't take it lightly. It's appointed once for man to die. If we lose our precious brothers and sisters due to martyring, oh God, Oh God, may it advance the gospel even further than they ever did with their words. Oh God, may it propel the kingdom of God like it never has before. We have seen with our eyes what persecution can do. We know that it can not only refine us, but it puts in us a sturdiness that we never knew was there. Oh God, be with the saints that are suffering, but God be with us so we do not become indifferent. Don't let us become passive and complacent and hide in you when our feelings are hurt or just hide in you when things are hard. Lord, let us dwell in you at all times, at all times, because we don't know the hour or the day. 
But oh, may our life count as something. Like Paul said, let it count as something. Let it be an investment for the kingdom of God. Let it be that because he loves me, that's what the word tells us in Psalms 91. Because she loves me, I'll rescue her. That doesn't mean I'm not. I'm going to be rescued from pain. I'll be rescued from death. I'm going to be rescued from hell. I won't feel one, one lapping little flame on my feet. Not one of my children will feel that in the name of Jesus. Not one of my grandchildren will feel that. My life, I will lay my life down for them to know who Jesus is. I will lay my life down and I will live my life loud under the shadow of Almighty we have work to do, girls. We have a declaration to make and we can't be passive and we can't be aggressive. We have to be consistent. We have to dwell as a covenant. We have to live in a constant partnership under the mighty shadow of God Almighty, his shadow, his wings are outstretched. So wherever he is going, we are going. Wherever the anointing is going, we are going. We don't get out from under it. We stay. We stay at all times. Because he's not leaving us. We invited him. He planted himself in us. The incorruptible seed lives, dwells, breathes, has its being in us. And our part is to remain in him. So let's get our Bibles out. Let's get ready to declare Psalms 91 again, again over our life, over the persecuted church, over our children that are being bullied, over you if you're being harassed, over moments in time where you feel like you are, you are having to make a decision. I know that there are many people that are being cornered to make a decision according to their conviction rather than, than finances. Sisters, we are praying for you. I, I believe that you that is your decision between you and God. I, there is no pressure from me on either side. Uh, if you, if you, it's a personal preference. And if it says, if you say, I feel persecuted in making the decision based upon if I do or don't do what they are mandating me to do, then that means... I'm going to trust the Lord and dwell and live and breathe and have my being in his covenant underneath at all times and never leaving it. He will never leave you. You don't leave him. So if that's where you're at and you're feeling persecuted, we are praying for you. If you're feeling pressure, pressure from a loved one, if you're feeling bullied, harassed, abused, girls, you, you stay hidden in Jesus, but you get away from the abuse. You stay hidden in Jesus. You can stay hidden in Jesus and get out of a bad marriage. You're not going to hear me preach. Just wait for it to get better and just be a passive, complacent, submissive wife. You'll never hear those words come out of my mouth. If you're in an abusive marriage, get out. Get out now. Only Jesus can change the heart of a man and you being, and I don't know who I'm preaching to right now and if they're going to catch it later, but only you submitting to God right now and just saying, God, I'm going to trust you with his life, but I need to get my life out or my children's life out. It's okay. I'm going to tell you right now, it's okay. It's okay to get away. God, I don't care if he's a godly man and you're a godly woman. If there's abuse, if there's cruelty in it, God is not pleased in it. Pack up, follow God, because he says, my daughters, aren't, my daughters aren't treated like that. You're not trash. You're a treasure. You're precious. So don't stick around. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now. Maybe nobody. But I felt like I needed to take that little side road. Get your scripture. Get your Bible ready. NIV, we're going to go. Psalms 91. If something jumps out at you, if something in this jumps out at you today that, that quickens in your spirit, put it in the chat. If you are dealing with persecution, put it in the chat so we can come in agreement and pray over you. If you have a burden for somebody who is dealing with um, pressure and persecution, let us partner with you. Let us partner with you. We want to send the shadow of the Most High. We want to abide under the shadow of the Most High. We want to walk Walk with the shadow of the Most High. Our God is a mobile home. He's a mobile home. He doesn't leave us. And he's not, he's not one of those trash mobile homes either. So let's just get that straight right now. The kingdom of God moves around. So we're talking kingdom mobile. Wow. I'm telling you, it's where I'm at today. 
Psalms 91, he who dwells, lives, abides, is married to, has a covenant, never leaves the shelter of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foul or snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make, if you make the most high your dwelling place, if, you make the most high your dwelling place, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent, the dragon. Because she loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue her. I will protect her, for she acknowledges my name. She will call upon me, and I will answer her. I will be with her in trouble. I will deliver her and honor her with long life. I will satisfy her and show her my salvation. Amen. Amen. Let's just wrap this up in prayer. Thank you guys for listening to my ramblings. I'm going to blog this for our devotion because I have so much that is exploding inside of me with just the understanding and the bunny trails of scripture that is weaving Psalms 91 and the dwelling place and him dwelling in us and us dwelling in him and what that truly looks like. Um, so let me just wrap it up. Let me bless you today. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you for your powerful word. Thank you, God, that you never leave us or forsake us. Father, it says that you go before us and you follow us and your hand of blessing is on our head. Father, that we dwell, we dwell in the shelter of the Most High, but it also says that you dwell in our praises. So may your May your praises ever be on our lips. Don't let us stop praising you, God. We want to give you a dwelling place in our heart and in our praise, Lord. May it ever be, ever be on our lips. How lovely is your dwelling place. Oh, God, you are saying, you are telling us, you, we are lovely. We are precious. We are influential for you. Oh, thank you, God, that you show us that there is no loss, that there is no loss, but only influential investments when we live our life and we die serving you, God, that there is no loss, that we won't feel, we won't feel the sting of death. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you are with the persecuted church. Thank you, God, that you're with my sisters who are enduring a form of persecution, harassment, or even bullying. Thank you, God, that right now you are instilling in them an authority over the situation. Lord, a courage. Father, a voice in it. Thank you, God, that they will not shrink back. The word of God says we will not shrink back during these times, God, but we will propel. Lord, persecution propels us. We will be the arrow in your bow, Father. Shoot us where you want us to go, Lord Jesus. We trust you. We trust you with our lives. And we thank you, God, that we get to be an investment here on earth, Lord. And if my death, brings you more glory than my life, then let it be, Lord Jesus, let it be. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Sorry, guys. I'm a mess today because I'm just, I've been in his presence since 2.30 this morning. And my mind can't wrap around it. What he's showing me, I appreciate your patience as I absorb this holiness. Oh, how lovely is your dwelling place. Oh God, how lovely. My soul does long and eat faint for you. 
Sisters, I bless you today. Thanks for tuning in. May you feel his presence hovering over you. May you feel the shadow. The enemy can't harness the shadow, so get underneath it. Tuck in tight. Because he's got you. I love you.